Dear sister, you know you should wear the hijab, but you think you have strong reasons not to, right? Okay, let's clear away the noise. Top searches in Google are loaded with content which exists solely to create confusion about the beautiful obligation for believing women to cover ourselves in a specific way. Who is making all this noise? And how do we Muslim women cope with something that will affect all our time outside the home? A little bit of digging shows that a network of academics and organizations committed to secular democracy are pushing an agenda of confusion relating to hijab and other elements of our faith. I know it's hard to navigate this online attack. It really is a minefield out there. And this makes it easy to be put off wearing the scarf and difficult to know who to ask. But taking time to understand this way of life and its expectations and parameters is absolutely essential. And you should not be put off. Why? For the benefit of your own soul. So where do we find sound guidance of the kind which will ultimately lead us to our desired destination, Allah's pleasure? Well, let me ask you this. Would you go to a motor salesman to buy a bicycle? Or a butcher's for vegan ingredients? Western academia, or social media for that matter, are not the spaces to begin your voyage. The navigators to the great truths of Islam must be those who have previously or are currently traveling the route of belief. Here's an easy exercise to give us some clarity. Go to Google now if you like and type in female scholar of Islam. Not female lecturers or influencers, please. Scholars. Now take a look at the photos. Here are some of the names that came up on my search from the list offering real advice on all aspects of life as a Muslim woman, including what Allah expects of us in terms of modesty. The esteemed learned women on the list include Ustaza Maryam Amir, Ansa Tamara Gray, Ustaza Yasmin Mujahid, Sheikha Fatima Bakatullah, Dr. Ingrid Madsen, Sheikha Aisha Prime. So how many of these respected female scholars do not wear hijab? The answer, unsurprisingly, is zero. And who do our learned sisters take their teaching from? Who are their examples? Are they guided by Harvard professors or Instagram influencers? Their leaders, our leaders as Muslim women are Fatima, daughter of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, his beloved wife, called mother of the believers and the righteous women who down the generations of 1400 years since then have all, guess what, covered themselves for one reason alone, the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala. Be careful when asking information on the Holy Quran and our Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, from those who are not there to guide you to success in faith. Islam? is in the doing, the actions, not merely the thinking. But you know what? I hear you. Hijab is a big commitment. It's a huge external signpost of what we believe. And it's there for everyone to see and judge. But know this, being beautiful in the eyes of others will never feel as good as being special in the eyes of our Lord. Allah Ta'ala says, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers to lower over themselves a portion of their jilbabs. That is more suitable that they will be known and not be harmed. And ever is Allah forgiving and merciful. Focus on learning from authentic sources and scholars of the past and from today. And my sister on this new past, know this, because shaitan will never whisper this to you. It is so thrilling to give something up or to take something on for Allah Ta'ala. How empowering it is to subdue the calls of our lower self because we seek his pleasure alone. Looking around for excuses not to wear hijab is tempting. Shaitan wants us to go fatwa shopping. As Muslims, our faith affects our lives far beyond the walls of the mosque or the corners of the prayer mat. Islam is our daily routine, from when we wake up and pray Fajr to the final prayer before sleep. Its endorsements affect our interactions, choice of food, pastimes, social venues, friendship groups. Modesty is an important part of this beautiful and complex layering of Essex, which applies to a way of being very different, yes, different, from social media culture with its Twitter trolls and TikTok addictions. 
Studies show that the less Western women wear, if the flesh they show is considered appealing to men in power, of course, the more they can get paid. Allah Ta'ala spares us that humiliation. I want to read you now something by Ansa Tamara Gray from her article, Lean In, Our Feminist Manifesto, and I link to it below. She says, like a sports team, we recognize each other. Like an ethnic background, we feel comfortable with each other. Like a flag held high in the field of battle, we bravely go out every day in every country of the world and represent our prophet, peace upon him, our religion. We represent our men who too often blend into the background. And we represent our hurting women who need our activism. We represent any woman of faith unsure how to outwardly express her conviction. Hijab, like all acts of duty, comes down to putting the good opinion of Allah Ta'ala above human beings. Seeking his love, asking for his mercy, thriving because of his pleasure with us. My message to you, my dear sister, is wear the scarf that you may be known.